Good evening students. Welcome to my channel. This is Dr. B. Tulasi, working as Associate Professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Vignans Nerula Institute of Technology and Sciences, Roman, Palakloru. Today I am going to discuss about NPTEL OOAD Assignment 5. And uh, I already told you that last date for registration is 28-10-2020 and the date of the examination is December 18th. And this is the notification from the NPTEL. Here they had given that if you want to do the registration before 28, the fees is 1000 rupees per exam. The fees is 1500 from 28 10 am to November 2nd 5 pm. And uh, you can also avail the fee waiver 50% for the students who belong into a SCST category. They can produce a community certificate and the students of a PWD category with the more than 40% disability can also avail this fee waiver by producing the disability certificate. And the last date for exam registration is November 2nd, but the fees will be 1500. So I request you all to register before October 28th and uh, the exam date is December 18th. Let's start our assignment fine. The first question is which one of the following is true? Structural diagram shows the static structure of a system and behavioral diagram depicts the dynamic behavior of the objects in the system. Option B, structural diagram show the dynamic structure of a system and behavioral diagrams depict the static behavior of the objects in the system. And uh, option C is both structural diagrams and behavioral diagrams depict the dynamic behavior of the objects in a system. Option D is both structural diagram and behavioral diagram depict the static behavior of the objects in a system. And E is none of the above. So coming to the option is A. Structural diagrams show the static structure of a system and behavioral diagrams depict the dynamic behavior of the objects in the system. So coming to the explanation, according to the unpital material, the structural diagrams show the static structure of the system and the behavioral diagram show the dynamic behavior of the objects in the system. Coming to the second question, software development life cycle has the following phases. A. Cost benefit analysis. B. Software hacking. C. Software analytics. D. None of these. Coming to the advanced software development life cycle and coming to the phase 1 preliminary analysis, the first step is to compile a comprehensive list of all the costs and benefits associated with the system. Costs include direct, indirect costs, intangible costs, opportunity costs and cost of uh, potential risks. Benefits include direct and indirect revenues and intangible benefits. So coming to the option is cost benefit analysis. Coming to the third question, which among the following normal diagrams is not an outcome of the SDLC analysis phase. So the options are deployment diagram, activity diagram, timing diagram, deep component diagram. So according to the material, the output of the analysis phase is class diagram, sequence diagram, collaboration diagram, state chart diagram, activity diagram. So they had not directly given the sequence diagram, but they had given a timing diagram that is nothing but a sequence diagram. So the options are component and deployment diagram. Coming to the fourth question, state whether the following statement is true or false. Your specification is an out output of the design phase. The answer is false. According to the material, the output of the requirement specification phase is UI specification. So, you can see here the UI specification. The UI specification is mentioned here. So, it can't be the output of the design specification, design phase. So, the option is false. So, coming to the use case diagrams are structural diagrams used to describe the set of actions that the system perform in collaboration with one or more external users of the system. So, the option is false because use case diagrams are behavior diagrams but it is given as structural diagrams. They remaining, the definition is same, only the part is behavior. So, behavior can be a structural. So, the option is false. Actors can be classified as function, passive, non-human, secondary. 
From the material, it is clear that actors can be classified as human, non-human, primary, secondary, active and passive. So the option function is not there in the list. So it can't be the actor. Next coming to the common data for the questions 7, 8 and 9. Visa process is a visa application processing system. The figure below shows the use case diagram of visa process. Answer the following questions based on the diagram. So we are having two actors, visa office and applicant. Applicant is a human, visa office is a system. Though it is a system, it can be considered as an actor. And these are the use cases. And uh, there is a relationship between these use cases, generalization, include and extend. So generalization is nothing but a parent-child relationship. And include means by default, well, we can use that use case. And extend is the additional feature. And by using the extension points, we can use this extend. So coming to the second question. Identify the actors of the system. So it is clear from the figure that we are having visa office and applicant. So these are the actors. So visa office and applicant are the actors of the system. Coming to the eighth question. From the options below, choose the correct ones. So, senior citizens do not need passport verification. So, here the senior, every applicant should go for the passport verification. So, this is false. Visa office can do visa rejection. This is true. So, this is not incorrect. Tourist visa can avail work permit facility. No, it can't do that. Senior citizens cannot avail tourist visa. Anyone can avail the tourist visa. So, the answer is A, C, D. Coming to the ninth question, choose the correct statement for visa process. Senior citizens concession extend the base use case submit fees. Let's see this. So, from the figure, it is clear that senior citizen concession is extended from the submit fees. Okay, it is a base class. So, this is extended feature. So, this is true. And uh, next one, visa check extends a base use case passport verification. So let's see this, whether visa check is there or not. Visa, passport verification, visa rejection is there, visa check is not there. So this is the false. And uh, tourist visa process inherits the behavior of the base use case processing. So here we are having processing. So tourist visa is a uh, Inherit the behavior of the base use case process. This is true. So the answer is A and C. Coming to the 10th and 11th questions, we are having the common data. The following diagram shows the representative use case for the shopping payment system. Answer the following questions based on the diagram. So customer and uh, checkout is the use case. Help. Help is the extent. It is the additional feature. And uh, include is the, uh, if you have checkout, you need to go for the payment and manage users, administrator, clerk, payment service. So let's go to the question. Identify the actors of the system. So it is having three actors, customer, clerk, administrator. Customer, clerk, there is no administrator. So we have not, we have taken only customer and clerk. Next one is from the options below, choose the correct ones. A checkout can optionally include a payment step. It is not optionally included. That is condition. Mandatorily, it should be included. So that is the wrong answer. Every payment mandatorily involves the payment service. Obviously, the payment service requires a payment transaction. So it also needs to be done. Help is the optional use case for the checkout. See here. Help is the optional use case. It is optional. But the, you can't take uh, this checkout is optional for the payment this is not optional it is mandatory so coming to the 12th question so consider the following use case diagram it is known that actor b is a specialization of actor a and actor c is a specialization of actor b a1 a2 b1 b2 are the represent use cases which one of the following statement is correct relationship so it is clear that this Actor A, actor B is a specialization of actor A. So, A is an actor and a B is a specialization of that actor. 
so this is B and uh, actor C is a specialization of a uh, actor uh, B so here you need to take the generalization symbol this is actor C next uh, they had given that A1, A2, B1, B2 are the all present use cases which of the following is a uh, correct so it is clear that A, B, C you can't take this B because if you take like this, A acquiring the properties of B, B is acquiring the properties of C. So this will become the parent. So here A is the parent. So you can take this option. And next one, if you see here, here C is having some use cases and B is also having some use cases. Okay. So if A is the parent class and B is a child class. So if A is, A is having two use cases, A1, A2. And B is having B1 and B2. So A1 and A2 are connected to A and B1 and B2 are connected to B. Obviously, if B is acquiring the properties from A, then it can use the use cases. It can directly communicate with the A1 and A2. There is no need to represent this. Okay. So this is semantically equivalent to A, A, A1, A2, B, B1, B2. So though it is not connected to A1 and A2, but semantically it represents the same. So the option is C. You need to choose the C option. It can't be this one because A1 and A2. This can represent here if it is this means. So A also acquiring the A also taking the properties of B1. No, this is not a semantically equivalent. So the options are A and C. Okay. So that's all for today. And uh, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the session. Please subscribe the channel and we will meet in the next week.